And welcome to the program. You know, we look at news, views, truths from a decidedly biblical perspective. And that little clip of Dave Wilkerson was just a tease. We're going to talk about a topic, sort of uh, as Dave Wilkerson has just pre-announced there on God's kind of warning voices, because we're carrying a new book by Dr. Dave Reagan, God's Prophetic Voices to America. And we're going to talk about some of those prophetic voices here for the hour. Dr. David Reagan, welcome back to the program. Well, thank you, uh, Jan. It's always a joy to be on this program with you. And wow, what a, what an audio clip you had there. That was fantastic. Well, but it sets the stage for what you have written in your newest book. And you say God never pours out his wrath without warning. He does not wish that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And you say he warns through remedial judgments and through prophetic voices. And then, David, you talk in your introductory chapter or two a lot about the religion of humanism, which would teach our ultimate hope is not God, but man. Why did you open with that theme? Well, because I believe that God is raising up these prophetic voices to speak out against uh, humanism. Humanism is the religion of Satan, has been from the very beginning. It's gone by many different names, but the fundamental characteristic of it is the exaltation of man, the belief in man, the rejection of God, and the humanists have grown increasingly strong in our nation ever since the beginning of the 20th century, and they are, I think, the number one enemy in America today of Christianity and the Judeo-Christian heritage that made our nation great. So I started off the book by talking about who the enemy is, and then I shifted to talking about how God is raising up prophetic voices right. to speak out against that enemy and all of the manifestations of that enemy. Right, but I think what you're probably saying is that through the humanists, their message is we don't really need God because with man, we can solve our problems with man. That's absolutely right. That is their message that uh, the idea of God is ridiculous, that uh, we are putting our hope in myths and fantasies, and that uh, the only hope for man is man and man's rationality. And of course, you look back on human history and you can see that if we're going to rely on the reason of man, we're in bad shape because man is basically evil, born with a sin nature. And uh, if we're going to rely on man, we don't have much hope. And then you also, you emphasize, and and this is a passage of Scripture so relevant here to the 21st century, and you talk about 2 Timothy 3, because in the, certainly the last 20 years, and even more in the last, say, 8 to 10 years, we have seen mankind just have an overemphasis on the love of money, the love of themselves, the love of pleasure, the rush to hedonism, a lifestyle of pleasure, and then you say this leads to nihilism or despair, and you say today people are wallowing in despair, and they're trying to find relief through drugs, you name it, they're trying to find it. But how are you tying this with the Second Timothy 3 passage? Well, uh, when you read Second Timothy 3 and beginning with verse 1, it looks like the evening news that we yeah. watch every evening here in America. Uh, it's a society that's just falling apart at the seams. And, um, you know, Jan, you know as well as I do that that is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy because prophecies says several places that in the end times, society will become like it was in the days of Noah. And if you go back over to the book of Genesis, chapter 6, and look and see, well, what was Noah's society like? It was characterized by two things, and that's violence and immorality. And that's where we are today. We're in a world that is characterized by violence and, and just gross immorality getting worse and worse. And so we're seeing Bible prophecy being fulfilled before our very eyes. Talking to Dr. David Reagan, and uh, many of you follow his outreach heavily. It's Christ and Prophecy TV. You can look at your local listings for that, lamblion.com, because Olive Tree Ministries is carrying one of his books. And folks, we're not carrying a lot of products, but I felt that this one had a message that you needed to hear about, God's Prophetic Voices to America. And you can find that in our store at olivetreeviews.org. And, you know, Dave Reagan, I think things kind of went south in about the 1960s. We lost the culture war in 
the 60s, and sort of everything spiraled down and out of control since then. Maybe that was planned, I'm not sure, but that was kind of the, the starting well, Jan, point. Well, Jan, I think you're absolutely right about that, and that is why I think it's so interesting that God began to raise up these prophetic yes. voices in the 1970s. I mean, the three of the four that I emphasize in the past all came on the scene in the 1970s. They were David Wilkerson and Francis Schaeffer and Alexander Solzhenitsyn. And Wilkerson and Schaeffer, they began to speak out in the mid-70s about the deterioration of American society and calling this nation to repentance and warning of judgment. And then Alexander Solzhenitsyn, many people are not aware of the fact that when he was kicked out of the Soviet Union, he came to the United States and settled in the state of Vermont, and he also began to speak out against the materialization and paganization of American society, much to the consternation of many people who had been admirers of him. In fact, I point out in here that he was invited to speak at uh, the commencement at Harvard University in 1978. He arrived a hero and, and left a pariah because faculty actually booed him and everything else because he got up and talked about uh, what a horrible thing humanism was and how it was destroying the American right. society and how we had forgotten about God. And that was the last thing in the world the intellectuals at Harvard wanted to hear. I'm going to back up just a few years here first, because you're right. You've got four voices from the past. I'm going to spend just a minute on them. You've got Peter Marshall. I'm going to say a word about him. You've got Dave Wilkerson. You've got Francis Schaeffer and Alexander Solzhenitsyn as prophetic voices who are no longer with us. Let me just stop for one minute here, David, because when you say prophetic voices, now I too have a little bit of difficulty. I have to be convinced that there are, for instance, our prophets and apostles today. So let's explain what you mean by prophetic voices. Well, what I'm talking about, the voices here, I'm not talking about people who are specializers in the teaching and preaching of Bible prophecy. Most people who are specialists in, in the teaching and preaching of Bible prophecy are spending their time talking about such things as whether or not the Lord's going to come back and reign for a thousand years on planet Earth or not, or whether we're in the millennium now and what's going to be the timing of the, the rapture and so forth. And all those are important topics, but that's not what I mean here by prophetic voices. What I'm talking about are people that God raised up to speak to American society and to point out to Americans that we were turning our back on him and his word and that we are facing terrible judgment if we do not repent and turn back to okay. God and to his word. You happen to start with Peter Marshall because he, back yes. in 1944, That's he right. warned that America was headed into becoming a secularized society, material-minded, and I think he's definitely one who was called with a prophetic voice to warn America. In a sermon he preached, in New Orleans in 1944. Uh, you know, people consider that sort of the height of America. We were mm -hmm. winning World War II. Everything was going great. But he was, he was saying, yeah, but you've got to understand something here. And that is that I see our society headed in a materialistic, paganized direction, and it's going to get worse after World War II when we suddenly have the freedom to spend our money on all the products that we want. Because during World War II, consumer products simply were not available. And when when he gets to the end of the sermon, he says, what we need in America is a prophet who will have the ear of America and say to her, how long will you halt and stand between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal be God, follow him and go to hell. And I tell you, when I heard that sermon, I was driving down the highway and nearly drove off into the mm. ditch. But he was really strong about that. And he called for a prophet. He said, we need a prophet. And that was in like 1943, 44, and, and 30 years later in 1973, Dave Wilkerson stepped forward and said, I have a vision of where America's going, and it's not a pretty vision. And incidentally, at that time, as you well know, Dave Wilkerson was the darling of both the charismatic and the Pentecostal movements. He was their number one star. And Jan, the moment he began to speak out about the need for repentance and that God was going to pour out his judgment on this nation if we didn't repent, many of those uh, charismatic and Pentecostal churches just washed their hands of him, well, even took their his books out of their bookstores sure. because it said, well, he's a negative. Voice. Well, they were preaching there's going to be a huge revival about that time. Oh, yes. There's going to be a great revival in the end times. The Bible never speaks of a nope. great revival.
great revival in no. the times. It te- speaks of growing apostasy in the end times. But that's what they were teaching. I think Wilkerson is a little bit like the prophet Jeremiah. He was a weeping yes. guy. I mean, he said terrible things could come to America if we don't turn things around. Then you highlight somebody else here who's passed on, another fellow who was prominent in the 1970s, Francis Schaeffer. He warned. He put uh, some of his thoughts in uh, a book, How Should We Then Live? A film, actually. He attacked humanism, and he said, if we don't repent, we are going to be judged. And then, then he tackled the church with the great evangelical disaster book. So he was another one who warned back 30, 40 years ago. Yes, he did. He wrote a book. The one you mentioned, yes, was his major book. But then right before he died, he wrote one called A Christian Manifesto, in which he talked specifically about American society and the triumph of humanism in our society. And in that, it's very interesting. He said that he felt like the greatest threat to American society, to the Judeo-Christian principles we hold so dear, was the Supreme Court and the judicial activism and what he called socialized law, law not based upon God's Word, law not based upon the Constitution, law not based upon natural law, but law based upon changing fads in society. And he said that is going to destroy America if we don't get these mm-hmm. courts under control. And then the very last book he wrote was on, called The Great Evangelical Disaster, in which he's talked about the fact that one of the reasons our society is in such terrible condition is because of the fact that evangelicals were beginning to abandon their belief in the inerrancy of God's yes. Word. And that was one of the things yes. that this man fought for from the time he was born to the time he died, was he fought in behalf of the inerrancy of God's Word. Talking to Dr. Dave Reagan, because we're carrying one of his books, God's Prophetic Voices to America. We're spending some time here on four of these voices who've passed on. We're going to get to the nine who are still with us here in just a moment. And then, David, you move on to, as you already indicated, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, Russian novelist who gave a warning, and back in the 60s, he was in the Soviet prison camps. For some insane reason, they let him go. I can't imagine why they would do that, because he was going to get out and tell the truth about the gulags. Right. He was a powerful writer and won the Nobel Prize, but he wouldn't accept the prize because he wouldn't leave his country. He was afraid they wouldn't let him back. He loved the native country of Russia, but they finally kicked him out, and he came to the United States and settled in Vermont. And not only did he give this great speech at Harvard, but later when he won the Templeton Prize, or it was given to him for his religious leadership, he gave a speech there that was just unbelievable. And let me just quote one paragraph. He said, more than half a century ago, while I was still a child, I recall hearing a number of older people offer the following explanation for the great disasters that had befallen Russia. Men have forgotten Mm -hmm. God. That's why all this happened. Mm -hmm. And he said, that is exactly what is going on in the United States. States of America, everywhere I go, he said, I find people who have forgotten God. And he said, when you forget God, you will become caught up in materialism. And then most of his speeches were against materialism Mm -hmm. and how materialism is an empty way of living, and it robs you of the soul and robs you of the real meaning of existence. And the man was just a very, very powerful spokesman. And most people didn't know he was a Christian. He was born and raised in the Russian Orthodox Church. And although he became a communist, he was arrested for writing a private letter about Stalin in uh, in which he was critical, and he was put into the Gulag concentration camps and was in there for over 20 years. But during that time, he refound his faith, and he came out with his faith renewed, and he died with a very strong faith. Right. Russia deported him in 1974. He wrote the Gulag Archipelago, I believe 1973, but he was in the Russian camps, I believe in the 50s and 60s. It may have been in before that. Incredible story. And I had forgotten that he had made the analogy, look, uh, our nation, Russia, forgot God. America, you're making the same mistakes. You're going to suffer the same consequences. He's one of the four of the prophetic voices that have passed on that Dr. David Reagan writes about. And then David, David, you've got about nine that are still with us, and we're going to get into those, and I think we'll get into those in my second segment. But I'm going to the back of the book right now. We're going to talk about the back of the book here a little bit later. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm just giving a little tease here because you close this book, and it's very ominous, I think, how you've closed the book. We can talk about it as we kind of wind the program down, but you say, is America doomed? And you give some statistics here towards the end of the book that are ominous, and I think 
the point of what you've you've done in these approximately 270 or 280 pages. I think what you're doing is saying, you know what, unless we listen to some of these voices, we probably don't have a very good future. That's true. When Reagan was elected, it's interesting. It was fascinating to me to see that Francis Schaeffer in his book, The Christian Manifesto, said, God has given us a window of grace. And he said, it'll be interesting to see whether we take full advantage of it or not to stop the advance of humanism. And of course, um, it was a window of grace. But as soon as Reagan left office, the march toward the humanist highway just kept right on going and in fact accelerated. And I suggest that that is what's going to happen when Trump leaves office. I think we have a second uh, a window of grace there yes. that God gave us, a very miraculous one. But I think that um, it's going to pick up and continue, and I give some reasons for that. Right. And and one of those reasons is that when President Obama left office, after eight years of the most ungodly administration in American history, he left office with a 60% yeah. approval rating. And after eight years of the most ungodly administration, his designated heir, Hillary Clinton, got three million more votes than Trump did. And after eight years of that ungodly administration, the young people of America, the millennials, the 19 to Mm -hmm. Mm 28-year-olds, those people supported an out-and-out socialist for president. And when he didn't get the nomination, they supported Hillary Clinton overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm. But even more important than that is the latest Barna polls are now showing that only 9% of Americans have a Christian worldview, yep. and only 17% of those who claim to be Christians have a Christian worldview. Well, I want to talk about that and more, but first I want to talk about the nine voices who are trying to warn today. And folks, we'll do that as soon as I get back from a very short time out. I'm sure you're curious to know who some of these folks are. I think you're going to recognize most of them, and I suspect many of them, if not all, have somehow impacted your life. They're warning today. They're not as the first four who are not with us in any longer. These nine are with us today. We'll get back to that in just a couple of minutes. Don't go away. Don't touch your dial. We know you're enjoying today's Understanding the Times broadcast. You can order a recorded copy of today's conversation by phoning 763-559-4444 or download this program from our website, olivetreeviews.org. You can order a copy of David Reagan's new release, God's Prophetic Voices to America, at olivetreeviews.org or when you call 763-559-4444. Olive Tree Ministries host yearly conferences that put you in direct contact with the best in Bible commentators. These conferences are recorded. They're available for you to share with your family and church friends. In just a moment, Jan will give you more details on ordering your own conference memories. When you make a tax-deductible contribution to this listener-supported ministry, you become our financial partner. Please consider becoming involved to help us reach America with a message that Jesus is coming soon. You can write with your gifts to Olive Tree Ministries, Post Office Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. John returns with David Reagan right after this. We are conducting Understanding the Times 2017 this weekend with folks from all across America attending. The remnant of believers want to understand the times and become watchmen on the wall. Our speakers this year are Amir Safadi, Pastor J.D. Farag, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, and Michelle Bachman. We will have CD and DVD ordering information for you next weekend. We live in unprecedented times. Daily headlines indicate that the earth is reeling, there are wars and rumors of wars, and the church is caving to apostasy. All predicted, this ministry tries to bring you the best experts, theologians, commentators, and authors to help you understand the times. Thank you for making this radio and conference destination a priority among believers around the world. Stay up to date by checking headlines daily at our website, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. You can access our weekly radio program at our website every Saturday morning. This is Jan Markell. Many Christian leaders avoid the topics of our day, but here on this program, we hit them head on. The times demand we address the hard issues and bring a biblical viewpoint into focus. Thanks for joining us. 
It's a warning, and it's a warning because all of us love this country. We've watched the mistakes she's made, concerned that perhaps is there time or is there not time to mend some of the things that we've done wrong over the many, many decades. As we return to our discussion on understanding the times, remember you can order God's Prophetic Voices to America, the focus of today's conversation, by visiting olivetreeviews.org and clicking on the online store tab. Now let's continue with Dr. David Reagan and Jan Markell. And welcome back. I'm so pleased to have on the line from Dallas, Texas, uh, Dr. Dave Reagan. You know him well through Lamb Lion Ministries, lamblion.com, Christ and Prophecy TV. By the way, I'll be on that program in November, I believe it's 12th and 26th. Having gone down there a little while ago to see the lay of the land in Dallas, visit the ministry and those that work there, including Nathan Jones and others, and of course, Dr. Dave Reagan. And so I have brought David on today to talk about his newest book, and that would be God's Prophetic Voices to America. It's a warning, and it's a warning because all of us love this country. We've watched the mistakes she's made, concerned that perhaps is there time or is there not time to mend some of the things that we've done wrong over the many, many decades. Dr. Dave Reagan, I want to talk to you a little bit here about the nine who are, you consider, kind of warning for today. You start out with a very interesting fellow I don't know, and he's actually retired now, at least semi-retired. CBS News called Don Wildman the Ayatollah of the Religious Right. (laughs) Lovely title, of course, coming from the far left, what should we expect? I I mean, head of the American Family Association in the mid-1970s, Tupelo, Mississippi. Look, he told Americans to turn off their TV for a week because he was a voice crying for decency. And you picked him as one of these voices. Yes, and he was also in the 1970s, in the late 1970s. He was an unknown country preacher from Tupelo, Mississippi. God has a great sense of humor, and the Lord just anointed him. And one day he just got fed up with TV and he just simply issued a little press release, which he sent to the Memphis newspaper and said, I want people to turn their TV off for a week and let the, these guys know we're not happy with what's on television. At, the, at that time, it was mainly the three major networks. And as he put it, the Associated Press must have had a very dull day because they picked up my little memo and it went out all over the nation. And he said, the next thing I knew, people were calling me from everywhere saying, we're fed up with it too and we're going to turn our TV off. And that but launched one of the most powerful ministries in America today, calling this nation to repentance. And now he has been succeeded by his son, who right. is also speaking out very forcefully and continuing the tradition of his dad. Yeah, Tim Wildman, good friend of this ministry, good friend of mine. In Don. 1982, he was invited to speak to the very prestigious Los Angeles World Affairs Council. And listen to this sentence in that speech. 1982, atheism and agnosticism with their stepchild of humanism, hedonism, and materialism may not be the official religions of our country, but they have become the accepted practical religion Mm -hmm. by many in key positions of influence. And boy, is that even more true today. Another voice for today, Dr. David Jeremiah. He had a fascinating sermon series, which was titled, I Never Thought I'd See the Day. I want to just play, it's a less than a minute clip here of Dr. Jeremiah. Today we reach the halfway point in a new series from Turning Point called, I never thought I'd see the day, culture at the crossroads. We're examining modern cultural and theological developments that I never thought I would see in my lifetime. Today's message is called, I never thought I'd see the day when morality would be in free fall. In this message, I'll look at how modern societies have decided to dispense with God's moral laws. To reset our moral compass as Christians, we need to look at the morality gap, the difference between the letter of the law and the the spirit of the law. That was Jesus' focus in a large section of his Sermon on the Mount. We'll close that gap in today's message coming up next on Turning Point. Another one of the voices you've highlighted, David. Yes, he wrote a powerful book about I I Never Thought I'd See the Day, in which he lists nine things that he thought he would never live to see, and they all have to do with the deterioration of our society. Never met Dr. David Jeremiah, but I do know another voice you've selected. He's a friend of this ministry. He's been at my conference activity. He's a friend of mine, Dr. Erwin Lutzer, and you say he's speaking against, emphasizing the evil of man. What do you mean by that? 
reason that's important is because one of the cornerstones of humanism, one of the cornerstones of, of the religion of Satan is the teaching that man is capable of perfection, that man is basically good and that he can be moved toward perfection through socialization and through education. And you and I both know, Jan, that the Bible teaches exactly yes. the opposite. It teaches that we are born with a sin nature, that man is basically evil, and that we cannot rely on man. We've got to turn to God. And so at the end of that chapter, I just say his whole message of Erwin Lutzer can be summed up in one sentence, and that is, America, stop trusting in men mm -hmm. and place your trust instead in God. If you'd like to check out this book, you can do so through Olive Tree Ministries, God's Prophetic Voices to America, olivetreeviews.org. Just go to my store. You'll find it there. You can call us if you'd like. We'll try to get it in the next couple of newsletters. I've had it in my e-newsletter several times. We'll try to get it in the print. And you're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. The author of the book, Dr. Dave Reagan, is a longtime ministry friend. I've had him at a number of my conferences. And, you know, David, this book is not about what you typically write about. You That's right. You typically write about the king is coming, <laughs> and now you've gone down a different pathway. How come? Well, this is what God's laid on my heart in the last few years. You know, it's, it's just hard to watch your nation die mm -hmm. on your watch, and that's what's happening here. So it's just been something that has been tearing me apart inside to watch all this going on. And, and so uh, I decided that I needed to put it all together together to point out how God is using these prophetic voices and remedial judgments to call our nation to repentance. God loves America. He's used America mightily to proclaim the gospel all over the world, and he is not looking forward to destroying this nation. But Jan, we're walking in the same steps that the ancient nation of Judah did. God loved that nation. Mm -hmm. He blessed that nation like no other nation, and they turned their back on him just as we've done, and they refused to abide by his word, and he sent prophet after prophet and called them to repentance. He sent rem Medial judgments, they would not repent. And when Jeremiah came and said, God is going to destroy this nation if you do not repent, their response always was, the temple, the temple, the temple. And what they meant by that was, God will never touch us because his Shekinah glory resides in our temple. And we're doing the same thing. When somebody speaks out like these voices are doing, usually they're met with criticism. And it's, well, America is the greatest nation on planet Earth. God loves America. It's like God sitting on his throne draped in an American flag. Mm -hmm. And yes, God loves America, but he is fed up with our opposition to him, with our rebellion against him, and he's calling us to repentance. And if we don't repent, this nation will be destroyed just like ancient Judah was. Well, another voice that's saying something very similar to what you've just said. He said it at my conference in 2015, he said, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but God's heart doesn't flutter at the sight of an American flag, uh, Dr. Robert Jeffress, again, yes. <laughs> warning of impending judgments. And he talked about at my conference and his books on your TV program at your conference. He warns about uh, some of the Supreme Court decisions. Let me just play yeah. that little clip here of Robert Jeffress warning. I learned something that morning about implosions. They're sudden. They're dramatic. They begin with a series of unrelated explosions, followed by a pause, and then a sudden collapse. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last 50 years, our Supreme Court has made three explosive decisions that have so weakened the moral and spiritual structure and foundation of our country that our inevitable collapse is certain. Right now, we're simply living between that time of the explosions that have weakened our basic foundation and the coming implosion. Well, David, he said it well. He said it at your event, my event. He says it all over. Yes, and just like Francis Schaeffer, Robert Jeffress focuses on decisions of the Supreme Court. He mm -hmm. points out five in particular that have just undermined our Judeo-Christian ethics, and he continues to talk about how the Supreme Court is just completely out of control and destroying this nation. So, yeah, he is a very, very powerful voice. And he's one of the voices you Well, Jan, have you're heard. one of the people I mentioned in here also. I don't know why you picked that. All she does is cause trouble. Jan, you are a very powerful voice, and I picked 
pick you out as a voice that's speaking out against the apostasy in the church because that's the reason our society is in the situation it's in is because the church has gotten in bed with the world and the church is more interested in pleasing society and being favored by society than it is in pleasing God. And you point that out tremendously. In fact, one of the most powerful quotes in this book is from you. The quote is this, Humpty Dumpty is having a great fall, but secular mankind cannot figure out how to put him back together. They think new elections, new laws, new treaties, new regulations will fix everything. They are clueless that the secular path always leads to folly. We have passed the tipping point. Let's hang on a little longer and be salt and light and try to delay the decay. There are still some faithful shepherds in some of our pulpits. Nothing is falling apart. Everything is falling in place. More distress is coming, and it will be heart-stopping and breathtaking. Judgment is upon us. Those are powerful words, Jan. Well, I'm concerned, as you know. My background as a young person was an extremely solid church. Happened to be Baptist, but um, that matters. But it, it spoke against apostasy all the time. Little did I know when I got into ministry, all I was going to run into was one false teaching after another false teaching. So my good radio co-host, Eric Barger, joins me very often speaking out against these things. And yeah, we're troubled by it. We really are. Well, I love your comment that you make over and over and over in your writings, and that is nothing is falling apart. Everything is falling in place. It reminds me of that great statement by Adrian Rogers in one of his sermons where he said, the world is growing gloriously dark. Now, people who don't know Bible prophecy can't understand what that means. But what it means is that Bible prophecy says that the world's going to be falling apart just as it was at the time of Noah when Jesus Christ returned. So the deterioration of society, as horrible as it is, is nonetheless a sign that we're getting very close to the coming of Jesus. So he said, we're growing gloriously dark. I actually had, out of your whole book of almost uh, 300 pages, I had that quote highlighted that I was going to talk to you about. Now, you've read. <laughs> It. The world is growing gloriously dark, Dr. Adrian Rogers, and uh, that's seen as good news because of well, how you just explained that. You are like a lightning rod for some reason. I don't know what it I is. I know I am. Like uh, everybody is attacking you, and and I think it's because Satan just hates what you're doing with a passion. He hates your ministry. He hates what you're saying, and that is, I tell you what, that's a good sign as far as I'm concerned, but I know it's tough for you. Well, it's not been the most fun, but, um, you know, what? I've got almost 40 years of experience of being kind of um, a punching bag, and I kind of ignore it now, David, and see it as a badge of honor. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Jan, the worst part of it is that a lot of that nonsense comes from people who are professing Christians. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so folks, if you'd like to see my testimony, it's in this uh, book, God's Prophetic Voices to America. And indeed, it has my testimony and other things, olivetreeviews.org. In fact, I want to recommend to your listeners a video Video album that you put out that I'm right in the middle of watching when you call me. I just got it yesterday. Yeah. And it's called The Blessed Hope. Oh, The Blessed Become Hope. The Blasted Hope. Became The Blasted Hope. Yep. That, it's a fantastic video, and people need to get that video. It is just really great. Thank you. It's the most frequent email here, David, is I cannot find the good news that the King is coming in any church in my town, and it's because certain people have come against that glorious message, and the, right. they're known as the rapture, and I name Name them all. I name all those that have come against this wonderful message. Let's let's cover a couple more people here before the segment gets away. And I want to talk for a moment about a dear friend of mine. I've worked with him since 2002. He's a watchman on the wall, Bill Koenig, and he's warning all sorts of warnings as it concerns Israel, her covenant land. And don't divide. Hey, it's not just a piece of real estate. It's God's covenant land. You can't divide it. Yes, he blesses those who bless Israel. He curses those who curse Israel. And... Uh... He has, a, of course, many people are familiar with his uh, book that he issued uh, several years yes. ago about showing the correlation between terrible calamities in this nation and our mistreatment of Israel. That one was called Eye to Eye. He has a new one out called Revealed, Obama's Legacy. And in there, he makes this comment, no U.S. administration has done more to accelerate the nation toward biblical judgment than Obama's administration. And he talks about how that administration was both 
quote, the most anti-Israel administration in American oh, history. Uh, it was stunning. It was so grievous, David, to get up every day and find a new outrage that the Obama well, administration... Well, I don't really know why anybody should be surprised when you consider that uh, Obama sat for, what, 25 years under the teaching oh, yeah. and preaching of that preacher in Chicago who was an anti-Semite to the core and spent all of his time condemning the Jewish people. Right. Uh, it was no surprise whatsoever. But And then Bill Koenig has an updated version of Eye to Eye facing the consequences that, yes, it's of, just come of out. dividing Israel. You can find that at watch.org. Uh, but actually, this hour, we're talking about God's Prophetic Voices to America, a new book by Dr. Dave Reagan. And I want to get to a, a few more that you've got <laughs> that you're talking about. I do not know Dr. Albert Moeller. Obviously, I follow him online, listen to a lot of things he talks about, and heard his podcast. You say Moeller is a voice confronting intellectuals. Why don't you explain what you mean? Well, he is uh, very intellectual, and we need a voice like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you try to read his books, they're not easy. (laughs) But he is an intellectual, and he speaks to intellectuals, and we need a voice like that, because I certainly couldn't do that, but uh, he can. And so he takes on the theologian, and he really is very effective at doing it and giving theological arguments in behalf of the Judeo-Christian values that made this nation great. Now, every once in a while, he can get down and really uh, talk to the average person as well. And he did that in an address that he gave out at Brigham Young University in 2014, where he made one of the most powerful statements that I have read about our society. He said, we are witnesses to one of the most comprehensive and fast-paced moral revolution Mm -hmm. ever experienced by humanity. The velocity and breadth of this revolution are breathtaking, and the consequences are yet incalculable. We cannot pretend that this is not happening. We cannot delude ourselves into believing that it will not matter. Very good. I think what we'll do is we'll hold over into the next segment. We've we've got a few more voices yet to cover. And then, as I said, I want to get to the very closing of your book. You're pondering some things. Uh, Is America doomed? Well, I'm not so sure, but we certainly don't appear to be playing any kind of a prominent role in, in Bible prophecy or eschatology. And, of course, you have some great insights, David, because you compare life as you recall it. You grew up in the 40s and the 50s, and, boy, you compare that to today, and we're two different, uh, like another planet uh, from back then as compared to now. And then we've got a couple of more voices that I want to talk about here before we wrap this up, and we will do that, folks. And let me just say this program is always posted to my website every Saturday, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. You can get a CD of any program. You can become a CD subscriber, but do call us on that so we can process that with a credit card. I hope you'll look into my print and my e-newsletter look it up online or give us a call and follow us on facebook as well jan markell's olive tree ministries and follow us on twitter at olive tree men i'm going to come back in just a couple of minutes we're going to wrap this up we got at least two more voices what are the voices dave reagan says that they're god's prophetic voices to america a list of four who have passed on nine who are still with us today and the book is in my store olive tree views back in just a couple of minutes. As you may already know from the discussion so far, one of the prophetic voices documented in David Reagan's new publication belongs to Jan Martell. As Jan tells her story about her own faith journey, we think you'll find David's chapter on Jan fascinating. To order your own copy of God's Prophetic Voices to America, visit our bookstore at olivetreeviews.org or phone 763-559-4444. We think you agree every weekend this program broadcasts a message that America needs to hear. We trust you also believe in what we're doing. If you do, will you help us continue to reach America? Will you become our financial partner? No tax-deductible gift is too small. Everything given to this ministry goes directly into keeping God's message on the air and on the World Wide Web. Please write to us at Olive Tree Ministries, Post Office Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Jen Markell and David Reagan return shortly. Please stay with us. Seventeen years ago this month, Understanding the Times Radio began a local radio outreach in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. 
We started with just one half hour a week and featured an interview format. A few months later, we expanded to one hour live, and a year later, we began our syndication efforts. Thank you for standing with us as we try to proclaim the inconvenient truth each weekend. I have tried to present some of the foremost thinkers, writers, theologians, and more to help you understand the times and contend for the faith. Why not consider a tax-deductible gift right now to keep this radio outreach on well over 800 radio outlets in North America and around the world electronically? You can give online at olivetreeviews.org or call us at 763-559-4444, 763-559-4444. You can also drop us a check at Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. We'll keep you apprised of today, but also give you hope for tomorrow. For the King is coming, and our message to you is to be ready and to keep looking up. This is Understanding the Times Radio, the fusion of current events and biblical insights. Every week we bring you the best voices who discern our times according to the Bible. Join us every weekend on this station for an experience with truth that will enlighten your day. Understanding the times in which we live keeps us prepared for the changes coming to our world. The Bible is clear that the last days will be full of deception, delusion, and corruption like the world has never known. Every week we deliver to you insights that discern our days and bring you hope. We are Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell. Now Amos is, of all the Old Testament prophets, he speaks most clearly to our generation. And what you hear him prophesy to his generation is a dual prophecy that is applied today. In Amos, the prophet sees God as a lion roaring. A lion doesn't roar until he has his prey in sight. And just as he's ready to pounce, he'll give a roar. And he said God is roaring as a lion, ready to strike judgment on a backslidden nation and a church. Understanding the Times Radio continues once again with special guest Dr. David Reagan. Here's Jan Markell. Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. America, the country, is as divided as it has been in 150 years since the Civil War. Right and left live in entirely different cultures in a lot of ways, rarely encounter one another personally. They live in different cities, attend different churches, read different books, have different hobbies. They even eat different foods increasingly. At the political level, state and local governments don't just denounce federal policy, they actively defy it. Eight states totally ignore the federal ban on marijuana letting citizens grow and sell it with impunity. Countless cities tell their police to pretend that immigration laws don't exist or are invalid or so immoral that you can ignore them. Can we salvage a functional nation out of two groups who increasingly despise each other? It's a real question and not asked often enough. And we're talking about, uh, well, heavily America this hour and some who are warning America. And one of the things I'm concerned about is the divided states of America. That's certainly happened here in the last, oh, 10 years or so, and even more so in the last year. The last year it has been simply on overdrive. And so I have on the line from Dallas, Texas, the familiar voice of Dr. David Reagan, lamblion.com, lamblion.com, Christ in Prophecy on television. And you can look that up online, check your local listings for when that airs in your neighborhood. And we're talking about his newest book, God's Prophetic Voices to America, because in it he cites 13 people, four who are no longer with us, 
nine who are with us, and we're wrapping up that discussion because Dave Reagan hears a voice so important, the voice of Franklin Graham. And let me just say, and I think you rightly cite the fact that the 2016 election could have been swayed away from the hard left because uh, Franklin Graham visited all 50 states. I was present in St. Paul, Minnesota in June of 2016 to hear Franklin Graham, and he didn't get up there and say, you know, you've got to vote for the Democrat, you've got to vote for the Republican, but he just pleaded on behalf of God to spare America and to give us more time for the gospel and for the God to have mercy on us, and I think he did. He went to every state capital and asked people to pray, ask them to repent of the sins of our nation, pray for God to have mercy, and at every one of those stops he made this statement, I have no hope in the Democratic Party and I have no hope in the Mm -hmm. Republican Party, zero hope. Instead, our only hope is God. And I believe that's one of the reasons God gave us this window of grace that he's given us because of the fact that he went to all 50 states and had people pray. I really believe in the power of prayer. It was very, very powerful. I but was there. Franklin Graham is really right on the cutting edge, just like you, Jan. He's right out there on the cutting edge, and people hate him with a passion. Just go to Google, type in his name, and you will see just hundreds and thousands of vicious, mm. I mean vicious articles calling him every name in a book, using all kinds of expletives, denouncing him, saying, why can't he be like his father and be liked by everybody? Mm. Why is he so determined to go out and condemn everything that's going on? People just hate him with a passion. I really pray for his safety because I fear somebody may try to assassinate him. You know, the other thing I notice with Franklin is every media opportunity he gets, if it's just even two minutes on national media, He's going to get the gospel of salvation he does. in there. He does. He yeah. really does. Yeah. And that's that's wonderful because uh, time is growing short. You had to interject controversy into your book, and you included the, the prophetic voice of Jonathan Kahn declaring yeah. imp- impending destruction. We must repent. And uh, talk to me about why you included him. Well, Jonathan Kahn is just sort of a classic Old Testament prophet. He looks yes. like one. He sounds like one. He speaks like one. And, and uh, he and of course, he is a lightning rod also, because yeah. just like you have been condemned, people just right and left just seemed obsessed with condemning this man, and his basic message is just as biblical as it can be, that we have deserted God and his word, and we need to turn back and repent, and if we don't, God is going to judge this nation. That is his message. And why people are so obsessed with attacking him is just beyond my comprehension, except for the fact that that Satan must hate him with a passion and motivate as many people as he can to come against him. All right. Is America doomed? I mean, this is kind of the way you close off the book. So you've got all these, you've got 13 prophets, some past, some still with us. And uh, your ultimate question is, I think, have any of them made a difference? And again, you believe that God's given us a window of opportunity here with Donald Trump, just as we had a window of opportunity under uh, Ronald Reagan. And again, you cited some things that earlier in the program, only 9% of Americans have a biblical worldview. Let me go back to what you say. You say the America you knew is gone. And then you give some, some illustrations of what what it was yes. like in the 40s and the 50s. Law, that's not recognizable. That's true. Uh, you know, when I talk to young people, they, they just go into a state of shock because they can't believe that uh, the kind of America that I grew up in ever existed. Uh, but it did. I mean, we were very... Uh, Judeo-Christian principles in this nation were extremely strong. Every public meeting was open with a prayer. Every school meeting was open with a prayer. We prayed every day in class. We read the Bible stories in our English books. Our senior English book was full of Bible stories that we read to tell the teacher what the moral of the story was. Everything was closed on Sunday except the most essential things like maybe drug stores. I don't even think they were open, but they may have been. But most things were open. There were no diversions on Sunday. You did not have sports events on Sundays. They recognized that as the Lord's Day. In our part of the country, we didn't even have things on Wednesday night because they knew everybody went to prayer meeting on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And it just goes on and on. The Judeo-Christian 
Christian principles in this country were so strong. And all of that has just been diluted or else just simply disappeared. You also write in this last chapter about how divided we are. That's why I played that little clip. We have the two coasts of this nation yeah, right. against the center of the nation. Our nation is more divided right now than it's ever been since the uh, time of the Civil War. And I think that's one of the reasons that we're finding that there can be no, you can't find compromises in the Congress, because in the past, mm-hmm. the difference in Democrats and Republicans were not all that great. They both believed in Judeo-Christian principles, but they had differences concerning how much we should give to the poor or how much we should not, and things of that nature. But they could come to negotiated compromises. These negotiated compromises are no longer possible because there's such a tremendous divergence in fundamental values between Democrats and Republicans. So we're finding that increasing violence in our country, and I think we're going to find increasing violence, because there just is not this possibility of unity and compromise because we have such divergent values now instead of a basic value core. Again, you can find this book in my store, in my newsletters as well, God's Prophetic Voices to America. We've certainly referenced all 13 voices that Dr. Reagan believes are a prophetic voice to America. Warning, I'm going to quote you here, David. You've already made reference to this, but here's the direct quote. You referred to it a few minutes ago. How did this happen? And you say, we need to be clear. It was not due to the attacks of the secularists, the secularists, the humanists, the atheists, or the sexual libertarians. No, it has been due to the failure of the church to preach the gospel, call people to repentance, and stand for righteousness. In short, the church has sought popular approval, and in the process, it's gotten in bed with the world. You feel that the blame goes right back then to the pulpits. Yes, and Jan, that has been your voice, the voice denouncing apostasy. You have stood against it. You have pointed out that the church has gotten in bed with the world, that the church has abandoned the preaching of the gospel, that the church is in the entertainment business, and you're a great blessing to this nation and to the church. And I want to encourage you to keep speaking out and not be discouraged by attacks, because they will continue to come, but you're just doing a great job. And I want to also say that even though I don't believe that there is any hope for our nation. I believe we've reached the the point of no return, and there are people, of course, who disagree with that. But one thing we can agree on is that there is great hope for individuals. There is great hope for individual Christians, great hope for those who do not know the Lord, if they will only turn to the Lord. We have the hope of the rapture. We have the hope that Jesus says, no matter what tribulation we go through, what experiences we have that are negative, that he will walk with us through them. And those are great points of encouragement. Well, and you do add that here at the end. And I wanted to end that way, David, and that is we have the hope of his return. People can still call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. It's one thing to be saved from the tribulation and all of that, but the fires of hell we really want to save people from. And that is the optimistic, positive message of the gospel which is uh, not affected by where America's going because it's 